So I have listed out here all of the production problems that happened on Solo, including some interesting tidbits that I, I pulled. So I'm going to go through it. The history of Solo, a Star Wars story, if you will. So Phil Lord and Chris Miller, uh, who directed the Lego movie and 21 and 22 Jump Street, were hired to make the movie. There was that image that came out. It was the two of them and all of the actors in the Falcon. It was every, I remember it got everybody pumped. So at some point towards the end of production, Kathy is told that Alden isn't happy. Alden apparently went and spoke to producers, other producers, and said he wasn't enjoying, he doesn't think he's giving his all as Han Solo because... Phil Lord and Chris Miller are apparently um, shooting 30 or more takes of every single scene and constantly telling them to go off book and to um, make go ad lib to just go off of your own chops and that they wanted to be when Phil Lord and Chris Miller were hired, they said, we are going to make a bold Star Wars movie and they wanted to take the humor in a very bold direction. I mean, you see the Lego movie, you see 21, 22 Jump Street. That makes sense. That's what they do. But Alden apparently goes and says, this is not going to work. I don't feel comfortable. I am constantly having to do things I don't want to. If you've seen the movie um, Hail Caesar, the movie is absolutely atrocious. I absolutely do not recommend it. But Alden is pretty good in it. It's the only other movie I've seen him in. Um... So I understand from an actor's point of view when you're told that, you know, this isn't what you signed up for. You go and talk to somebody. That producer talks to Kathy Kennedy. Kathy Kennedy goes and watches the dailies. And that's where you get the quote where she says, this feels like Ace Ventura. She is just watching all these takes and says, and, and, and the quote comes out, I'm watching Ace Ventura. You know, whoever, whatever producer leaked that quote had probably stood by her when she was in a fury rage because her prize actor is saying that he doesn't feel comfortable with these two directors that should be doing a better job. Um, and remember, this movie comes out after The Last Jedi. So she is on her heel. She's nervous. Um, so they end up firing Lord and Miller with three weeks left of production. Um, which you just, you don't do. They debate, try to figure everything out, and they decide to bring in Daddy Ron Howard. And I still land on this camp. I think if Ron Howard is hired to direct this movie from the beginning, he's not called a safe choice. He's not called the the uncle to fix everything. He's a great director coming in to do a Star Wars movie who knows George, knows the property. Um, I think that's what happens if he's just originally hired to do the project. He ends up reshooting 70, well, estimated over 70% of the entire film delays production and goes massively over budget. The first teaser they get is the Super Bowl. This movie came out in May. The full first full trailer drops three weeks right before to not great reviews, although I like that trailer. Um, they had poster copyright problems. They released all these posters that people started thinking looked kind of cool. They looked Western. They looked different. They stole them. Colors, font, everything. Um... Then the movie comes out in May. Everybody's baffled. Why is Star Wars not in Christmas? This is, we thought Disney was going to do it this way. They don't. The movie does not make money, loses a ton of money. Massive failure. Bob Iger then on a call, uh, on an Investor's Day call a couple years ago, a couple years after this, a couple years ago from today, says, I made a mistake. I did it for the investors thinking this movie would work. I wanted to get a Star Wars movie out. We were struggling to make some quotas. My fault. Should have kept it in December. So then it goes dark for a while. And then when the Blu-ray is about to come out, John Kasdan reveals a bunch of stuff that uh, is also in apparently a commentary he does. He released 53 tweets, which are really just tidbits. They're just tidbits. They weren't necessarily drama fueled, but I think there is a little bit of drama in this and some interesting points. So I pulled out the highlight tweets. Uh, the chase scene in the beginning on Corellia was all uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. It was their idea. They came up with it. They executed it. Ron Howard reshot the whole thing. Um, both writers, John and 
Lawrence Kasdan, the original writer of episode five, wanted an entire sequence and had it written of us seeing Han train in the Imperial Academy and get kicked out of the, the pilots fighting, thought it was extremely important to him. Um, it didn't happen, he said, for various reasons. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller are the two who came up with the idea for Han to, to speak. Uh, Shiri Wook? Did I say that right? I always don't think I say it right. No, I, um, I, that's about it. It was their idea to have that happen. He said they thought it was that John Kazan said him and Lawrence loved, liked the idea. Um, uh, I'm not crazy about that personally. They think, um, John Kasdan said, um, when Han is talking to, uh, Dryden boss and comes up with the plan, they say they love that moment. It's one of their favorite in the entire film. And when writing it, because they believe it's the first time you see Han really be Han, that he is in a backed into a corner, came up with the plan off top of his head and convinced them to work it. I thought that was a nice little tidbit. Um, L3 was created by everybody, by Phil Lord, Chris Miller, Lawrence Kasdan, and John Kasdan all came up with the idea of, of her as a droid. Um, I feel like Lord Miller lean a little bit more towards the end up product we get. Mm -hmm. Um, Lando's, uh, cape closet, um, was all Lord Miller. They wanted that in there. They wanted to see it. Um, I'm okay with that. That was funny. Now here's something I actually did not know. Michael K. Williams, fantastic actor from empire was originally cast as Dryden Bost, shot everything. Couldn't do the movie. When Ron came in, he shot everything until the firing, because by the time the firing happens, they've wrapped filming. They're in production. Ron Howard came in and said, I need to reshoot this. And he was contractually obligated and overseas filming something else. Ooh. So they had to recast him. So everything with Paul Bettany was shot in a very quick, fast manner. Um, and he performs a very different Dryden boss. Now I have a quote from Michael K who says that the original idea um, after, when he shot when, the scenes he shot, he mm -hmm. said it was much more of what he called a pissing match between him and Han for Kira's attention. That it wasn't necessarily sexual, but that they had a, a much more clingy feeling with each other and that he really controlled Kira a lot more than what we saw from Paul Bettany. That mm -hmm. is all I got. That is the millions of problems we have. 